On today's episode, I get to talk to Victor Gamoff. Victor has recently joined the DevRel team here at StarTree, and he's going to talk from his recent experience in API gateways about the intersection of API gateways and real-time analytics. And you know, I didn't mention this during the episode, but he is leading an all-day Pino training on May 7th. Summit proper is May 8th and 9th. You can get more details at rtasummit.com, which I strongly encourage you to do right after you listen to this conversation between me and Victor. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real-Time Analytics Podcast. I am delighted. You know, podcast hosts always say that, but I'm, I'm really actually delighted today to welcome Victor Gamov to the show. Victor is the head of developer advocacy here on the DevRel team at StarTree. Welcome, Victor. Thanks, Tim. Uh, it's great to be finally here. It's great to be in another collaboration with you that we... Uh, yeah. Many people remember that we did for different outlets and different medias, and here we are. Back together again. I see you have a Pino t-shirt on. I oh, like yeah. that That's kind of effect. that vaguely celestial stellarish tree in the background. Is that a, it's like a star tree? Spe yes. Um, yes. Yes. This is um this is star tree. So it's not I official was, star tree branding. No, it is not. But I was um I was reading this book uh, that was actually kind of like a four part series. They kind of like a somehow connected. First two books were connected like very closely and the uh, second two books connected between each other and they based on the same kind of like a characters and the uh, universe. It's called the mm -hmm. uh, Hyperion Cantos. Okay. Uh, this is the very one of the one of the classical sci-fi one of the books that considered as a classic yeah. sci-fi uh, together with Dune, together with uh, Foundation. And there was a space race that was, um, they literally, their ships were shaped as a tree. Mm. Um, and uh, in the book, I believe it was in the third book, um, it called uh, Endymion. And or book four, uh, because they were kind of like a one continuation of another. They, they give... Um, they give a description of one of the uh, bigger ships, and they they literally called Star Tree there. And so what I okay. did, I literally took this quote that how they're describing this, and just plugged this into um, into Mid Journey, and okay. uh, generated this image. I was like, wow, that would be cool, like the shimmering light and there you like go. this like a uh, Star Tree. So you remind me, there's a there's a guy who's. Uh He's putting on YouTube and Instagram, at least, uh, telling these stories of these sentient plant species, the the carotenid empire and the broccolarian priestesses and things, uh, that star tree idea. Anyway, if you want to know what it's like to have dinner, say you're at a work dinner and, and Victor and I are there, it's a lot like this, okay? These are obscure topics and they're they're kind of the topics that get talked about, but we're we're going to... We gonna try to, on. yes, we will try to like stick to the script and... You have spent a few years recently at Kong uh, working on APIs, API gateways, things like that. And I thought it'd be interesting uh, with all of that experience uh, fresh in your mind to talk about the intersection of APIs and real-time analytics. So um, if I were and to just prompt you with that, are. yeah, <laughs> what, what, would you, what would you have to say? Um, yes, I think this is the incredible subject, and many people uh, were asking like similar question because um, they were when they learned that I'm I'm, I'm moving to a Star Tree to work on um, the real time analytics database mm -hmm. uh, like a Pino and uh, the cloud platform like a Star Tree. Uh, they were asking the question like how, you, how this happened, like what's the what's the uh, what's the what's the connection? How the things are you know coming together? And uh, the funny enough, uh, before I joined the Quonk and I was doing a lot of work with. Uh, 
uh, with Apache Kafka back to, at Confluent, uh, people were asking like, what's the what's, what's the connection? And the probably connection would be here that uh, I spent a lot of years working on different integration beats and integration through event-driven platform, integrations through APIs, integrations through um, any type of system that allows to um, enable or like unlock heterogeneous sources and put them into the platform where this uh, different sources can bring some new um, new life to data, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. It actually works very well. And specifically here, I think uh, the, the we will talk about this uh, while we're preparing. We were chatting about some ideas how we can uh, navigate this conversation. When we're talking about real-time analytics, we most of the time mean user-facing analytics, something yes. that's analytical data that would be important for the users. Delivered as a feature in an application. That's the that's the that's the money. It's not about a dashboard that's a thousand times faster because who cares? It's about a feature. Exactly. Yeah. So, and when we're talking about feature, it's not necessarily needs to be you know uh, in, in the world of uh, the World Wide Web. Uh, are they still call it in this way or just <laughs> just I don't the, know the kids are? I'll, I'll have to ask. <laughs> In our times, um, yes. So in the world of uh, the internet communication and when the protocols, application protocols like HTTP, gRPC, um, that become like a the de facto standard of delivering um, some sort of data from point A to point B, from producer to consumer. In this case, I mean the producer and consumer in a wider sense. Um, we mm-hmm. start uh, using those, uh, those protocols and interesting enough, we start calling this application program interfaces APIs that we will expose. It can be API, HTTP-based API, it can be gRPC-based API, it can be WebSockets, whatever, mean to deliver, like Tim said, this feature to end user. And uh, specifically why API is important, because it's a data. It's a data that will be uh, taking some sort of result and will deliver this result some way. Like if you think of even in a, in a tiny, tiny sense, when you open up the Pino console, web console, it's a um, the kind of like a single page application, or at least it looks like a single page page application, and it still talks. When it talks to the queries, it still talks to the Pino API server. So it is very well connected, and I can yes. make as many connections and references to one to another. Um, given the fact that I spent yeah <laughs> two and a half years working in the API world. Yeah. And I remember, um, th- this is a somewhat personal note, but when, you know, you were at Confluent, we were working together, you left to go to Kong. And I remember thinking APIs are, you know, that's kind of an opposite, the, the opposite thing. You know, this is all streaming and asynchronous. And, and yeah, that's th- that was the first thought that occurred to me. And as I thought through it a little bit about this transition you were making, I thought, you know, that is kind of immature from a technological perspective. <laughs> I don't mean like personally, I mean, it was all, that was that was all a good move, but um, there are always APIs. I mean, hopefully, you know your your backend is asynchronous, and you've got services that are consumers in the broader sense of being Kafka consumers and, and producers. But um, more broadly, yeah, if there's like a feature on the front end, you're not going to have a Kafka consumer in 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 React. Your mobile mobile application. Yeah, no, because you you have it's going to be hitting an API. Yeah, because your application wants to uh, operate, or your application, or the application that your users need to operate, it needs to take a lot of responsibilities um, in order to, you know, perform. Uh, and in the broader sense, not to perform faster, kind of like a, ideally it should perform faster. Yes. Um, but it needs to perform the business task that this application uh, to, needs to create. So that's why, yes. like having the worries about how those bytes will go around, like retries and all these things. Um, maybe it would be not such a good idea to put like L4 level protocols over the public networks that you need to care <laughs> a lot right. of things like encryption, different things with the uh, security entitlements and uh, not I'm not talking about the reliability issues, retries, uh, rate limiting, all this e- kind of even, things. Even rate limiting, yeah. trivial end of things, kind of, you know. Yeah. Right, when you would right. say user-faced analytics, we 
usually don't know how many users will be using this type of dashboard or the, the, how many people will be using the data from this particular dashboard for a particular feature for your application. We don't know this. Yeah, and the number point, can grow. It's probably bigger. It's probably yeah. two, three, four orders of magnitude bigger than transport layer connections to your database. Uh, yes, exactly. So, and when um, when we're talking APIs, APIs, API management platform, specifically, like I will be talking a little bit about the the, the backend side of things, mm-hmm. um, and the delivering means for the for the for the for the beginning. We we can talk about integration in a few few more minutes. So the I work at Kong, which is open source uh, API gateway, mm-hmm. and the Kong provides a lot of features that. Um, Developers don't need to put inside your application because they kind of sort of already exist, and they not only kind of sort of they they work very well, performance wise. There's no no issue there, so you can focus on delivering features, but not re-implementing some sort of reliability uh, functionality that is available. Otherwise, maybe as a library, um, library that you or some other person need to maintain. Um, this is the pieces of infrastructure, the API gateway piece of infrastructure that will be performing these type of tasks. And mm-hmm. uh, there would be dedicated people who will be uh, responsible for implementing those. Um, but the this is something that your application doesn't have to be one of the things that you need to worry, like minus one thing, yeah, or maybe yeah. two, you, or you maybe want, three. You want to pull infrastructure concerns out of your application code, and those are all infrastructure concerns. As we like to say uh, in this podcast or any shows, of course, it will depend. It will depend on requirements. It will depend on um, different uh, constraints. Like maybe you don't have a dedicated team that aware how the, the the API gateway will perform. So that's why, like, we have a cloud-based solutions and, and stuff like that. Um, so the I probably need to make a remark, uh, <laughs> like um, uh, the, the professor Holloway, uh, uh, author of multiple books, and uh, I'm a huge fan of his work. And uh, uh, one of the books that I how I start to know this guy, uh, it's called Four about uh, Facebook, Amazon. Yeah. Netflix. Yeah, the, the four or something. Like Scott Galloway. Yeah. 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 Galloway. Yeah. Link in the show. He notes. said, if every time when he talks about some software, he says, like, I'm an investor. It's just a for, for disclaimer. Yes. I'm an, <laughs> I'm, I'm an investor in Kong. So, yeah. Okay. And that's why I'm mentioning yeah. former, former employee, current investor. Thank, thank you yeah. for the, you know, hashtag safe harbor here. Um, yeah. Also, so. like, a nice flex, Victor. Um, yeah. So, no, <laughs> jokes aside, like, I never like to talk about technology that I personally, like, I, I would not going to endorse technology that I personally would not going to like. Like, if there would be some some crappy technology that I cannot, like, um, have a open open conversation about. I, I was, mm-hmm. for example, like, when I left the, the Confluent, I still was, like, huge Kafka advocate, was talking about Kafka integration. You and I, you and I still both are. I mean, that's, we, in the, in the actual work that you and I do, in developer relations, we can't, you know, it's it's our job to talk about how great technologies are. Um, we can't do that if we're not telling the truth. Yes, because um, that 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 will catch up with you. You you will. Yeah. Uh, you you can't get away with that. So. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, so, so that's why. Yeah, so that's why I can I can talk about this uh, every time. Like uh, some of the friends or or people uh, who follow me on social media or some other outlets, they asking like, okay, so like, so we we shouldn't use Kong anymore now. You're not you know talking about Kong. No, like if using Kong and you you like the things that I was telling you when I was working Kong, please continue <laughs> to use it because it's a great piece of technology. No, you shouldn't just like <laughs> no, oh, okay, I, so I pick quit. the left. You should. Yes. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> Let's no, start the project to way. remove this 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 stuff doesn't, from. Uh, doesn't work that way. Yes. Yeah, and uh, the, that's why I will be bringing some of the examples that um, that I have. Oh, please, so, yeah, including feel including totally including free, totally cloud free to solutions. Bring them. Yeah, yeah, that's why cloud I wanted to, solutions and all these kind of things. There you go. So I wanted to talk to you about this because you don't, you know, broadly speaking, let's assume one is trying to take the data of the business or the application and do things to it that expose it in useful forms as features that make the experience of using the application more valuable. I mean, that's, I just described user facing analytics, right? And yes. you got to do that in real time. So you're doing that. There are some API concerns in your life. 
you know, you're not you're not just directly exposing port nine thousand. Uh, you know, it's not going to happen. Um, we we had this like a that's why we have a lot of flashbacks uh, from uh, the things that we did the, at Confluent. Uh, because there was a, there is, there still there is a product that prev- helps you to expose Kafka to outside world without exposing Kafka to outside world. Um, so the rest of course, proxy. I'm talking about a REST proxy, of course, mm-hmm. yes. And that's kind of like a, one of the smart ways to use because it's not only you um, decreasing the the attack uh, landscape that mm-hmm. you know different malicious uh, agents can you know, put on your uh, Kafka infrastructure, but also it broadens the number of clients that can consume Kafka. There mm-hmm. are still, believe me or not, Tim, you will be surprised, in 2024, there's still languages that might lack of Kafka uh, integration. Maybe there would be, it's it's shocking. I know, I know. Oh, yeah, but but there's, there, there could be some languages that don't have um, Kafka integration. So that's why, um, but pretty much, Every device in the world have a some sort of version of curl or some sort of version of HTTP yeah, it, client. As I said, if you can append and parse strings and make a TCP socket, you can do HTTP. Yes, exactly. So that's that's why I'm saying like this. Uh, these technologies uh, uh, create much more wider accessibility to your data to features um, of your application, and. Uh, but from other things, so let's let's so we talk about the delivering, right? Um, we talk about delivering these issues through API gateway. It's all nice. So like you can you can control over things like rate limiting. There would be someone who would be very much interested to download all the data from your system, and they might not uh, have good intention, or maybe they have good intention, but they seen. don't know what they do. And this is where the API gateway helps with like simple reliability mm-hmm. things like rate limiting or even caching, because you know there are some situations where your SLA, even though we're talking about real time, but we're talking about seconds, like faster dashboards. Um, so in this case, do you, if you have a some of the data that changes every second, half a second, maybe it's okay to show data that was second to go sure. but as soon as you can deliver this feature faster caching mm-hmm. will be mm-hmm. a great tool to improve performance of application mm-hmm. it's funny you mentioned rate limiting i uh december i wrote some code there's a, a great site called the movie database put a link in the show notes it was completely compliant with terms of the api that they'll, they'll let you download a, a list of eight hundred fifty thousand movie ids but but no metadata then you can hit the API and extract metadata. I'm like, well, I want a few more fields for this demo I'm building. And so I just wrote some code to enrich all of those IDs in a local Postgres database. Um, now, they do have a rate limit specification. And the way I complied with rate limiting was that I made everything synchronous. And so it took three days. Uh, <laughs> there, there are better ways to do that. You know, you might want to say, yeah. let's make this 30 requests a second because that's comfortably under the threshold rather than, you know, all or nothing. So, Which is anyway. also... Uh, also, API capabilities. So usually, the systems that well designed and well um, thought out about how this data will be consumed, they providing you some some hints about. Okay, so uh, the way how we were doing this at Kong, we were just like putting special type of uh, rate limiting the headers and the response. So mm-hmm. you as a consumer. Uh, when you register at the system, you get the API key, and this API key will be your identity. So, uh, using the 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 sending this API key for every request will help the system to recognize you, and after that, like apply different policies. Uh, one of the examples that you, you can probably, uh, if people of internet can f- find, uh, when I was talking about uh, different levels of SLA that API gateway can do this with declarative fashion, you can have a multiple mm-hmm. tiers uh, in terms of tier one, free API calls, 10 API calls per second. You have a platinum tier or you have a golden tier, platinum tier, you just, you know, can do whatever you want, but you um, need to swipe the card. Yes, yes. <laughs> so okay. we operating on the limit, like um, how the uh, the Howard Stark was saying, like I'm operating with the limitation of the, the technology, uh, of, my technology time. of my time. Yes. Yeah. So there are ways, 
to communicate this type of things with uh, consumers of your of your application. Right, and that's not. I mean, because uh, generally, real time analytics databases are expecting profoundly concurrent concurrent uh, request streams. You know, tens, thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even hundred thousand request queries per second. That doesn't mean that rate limiting is not a thing, right? It means you're accommodating a high rate, but from each individual client, you might have different kinds of things. Each each service in your front end, you know, that the 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 business tier that's serving requests from the front end, these things are all reasonable things to rate limit. Still, in our world, it's it's not that we need to, but we still want to help everybody behave well. It's uh, how we like to say from the quote from 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 Spider Man: "With the great power comes great responsibility." If you can, doesn't mean you should. That's that's like general general statement that uh, consultant in me usually tell the people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you're building this system that you have a strong um, assurances that uh, this system would be only consumed from internal, and you have a control over what kind of clients uh, will be consuming this data, you have a control over, I don't know, different type of entitlements and uh, role-based access control to the systems, which is important, of course. Mm -hmm. It's important mm -hmm. for the system to have. But when we're talking about user-facing things, we need to make a decision where this logic needs to reside. We have options to kind of push it down to user and uh, put this logic inside the application. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this will increase a complexity of application. So our microservices, what I like to, to say usually, our microservices will not only start getting the, the business task, but also there will be convoluted rules. Plus, when you want to change those rules like dynamically without redeploying your application, you probably want to rely on some sort of like a system that allows you to do this dynamically without like without waiting to redeploy off application. So you want to push it logic to a little bit to infrastructure. And now you have a choice where you should put this. If you're using the API management platform, the choice would be uh, more or less obvious. So API management, like Kong integrates with the systems like Okta that allows you to do your identity management. And I, it does uh, very well. Or like, you know, forget about Okta. We can we can talk about any off two type of system mm -hmm. that... Um, um, can talk to this like a protocol, uh, can be integrated with API management system. And you will be able to do this like in uh, more or less in real time. One of the one of the good demos that we did um, <clears throat> is um, uh, with, uh, with more or less like a complex um, logic is um, there's, a, there's a cloud native project called OPA. Open Policy mm -hmm. Agent that allows you to kind of sort of codify some of the additional logic on top of the things that you can implement on top of the HTTP protocol. I'll give you idea. I'll give you example. So on API gateway level, you can restrict certain uh, verbs. You can restrict certain um, the, like uh, routes. You can restrict certain headers and things like that. But if you want to have uh, some sort of Complex logic, you can say that, okay, so I want to restrict this particular endpoint with only get verbs, but also mm -hmm. I want to check if there would be specially formed um, JOT token that will include some additional claim information I want to validate this against. So those things can be implemented, say, as a kind of like a piece of code that will be executed inside the uh, open policy agent and uh, the API gateway will establish this communication. There's a cool company called um, Permit, I think uh, that's the name. Again, not an investor, but uh, they, they do a pretty cool technology. <laughs> so they took this even even another layer. So They're not they a sponsor. We're just talking about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they could be. Took it to another um, layer. Actually, sorry. No, very, very, very good friends. I I, um, I, I spoke with one of their, uh, their podcasts um, and um, they spoke at the Kong Summit. I invited them to talk about this integration. Um, they they have this identity management or like entitlement management uh, on the kind of, uh, they hide all this OPA, which is kind of like a, one of the, how it's called, like a dialects of Go language. Hmm. And those, okay. uh, they, they hide this behind some DSL and nice UI. Um, pretty much same thing that um, uh, the Lunch Darkly can do for your 
like feature flags. Okay. They okay. do similar things for your, um, you know, the notification authorization and uh, entitlements uh, thing. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's uh, the um, you know some people might say that oh yeah so. How difficult this would be to implement inside the database, inside the peanut? Well, it will take uh, it will take time. Is it possible? Of course, it's possible. Of course, you know it's open source. You need to uh, create the um, proposal. The, when you talk about solution, how this will work, and after that, you know, commit some code. It will take some time, but like if you need this type of uh, functionalities in your application today, just like front your you know, the real-time analytic uh, uh, platform with the API gateway and, you know, you'll have all these integrations out of the box. And, you know, it's it's been a long time that we've wanted composable pieces. It, it's not like that's a new idea, um, but I feel like the, the direction software architecture has been taking in the last, say, five years, 10 years, um, I feel like the story is getting better uh, for for this kind of composability, like let's let's have an API gateway f- here. Let's not write our own auth, right? You just don't tend to do that anymore. Let's not, um, you know, write a nightly batch process or an every half hour batch process that loads up a key value store with the user facing queries we want to do, and then serve out of the key value store. You know, let's use a database that's actually built to to do that thing, that stuff. Um, and the the relatively more reactive, event driven, functional, whatever you want to call the way we're writing microservices, communicating through a message substrate like Kafka, those are the kinds of systems that we tend to see in the real time analytics world. It's not exclusive, right? But if that's where your data lives and and how your application is composed, you're more likely going to be able to benefit by having something like Pinot in your world. Because uh, you're going to have real time data in your world, we're going to be able to ingest it, serve it back to you. You know, there are a billion other variables there, but these tend to be the sorts of systems that we see where you want these things. Um, you you, you want to get, and and again, this has been a universal impulse, but I feel like the 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 heat's ratcheted up recently. The things that something like an API gateway does get get that out of your application. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Off. Yeah. Stop. Uh, I was listening to Chris Jenkins's podcast, Developer Voices, last week. Uh, Bobby Calderwood. I'll link to this in the show notes. Uh, I want to have Bobby on the show. Uh, Bobby, you're on notice. Um, uh, but he was talking about this framework they've got. That's this, you know, like hyper event driven thing where all your business logic is just a function, which is yep, yep. You know, this is this is how the functional programmers are. Um, but but it's it's all this one function. Uh, that d- just does your business logic. You put stuff in and it, it gives you something out. And you you can't do that and not take the kind of approach you're talking about. When you mentioned uh, composability, is, mm-hmm. if it, this is the word. Um, yes. Again, consultant and me likes to talk about integrations. Um, and when I was talking about, and when I was preparing to the show, um, since I was very much... Um, in the weeds of application development and showing developers the, I would say like how to how to securely and safely properly expose your APIs. But sometimes I I also uh, forgetting about the another phase <laughs> of uh, the API management platform that also can work as a integration conduit, like integrational means for the for the for the system. So. I'll give you an example. Now, the um, we uh, in in Kong we had this ways how we can. Okay, let me do even step back. You mentioned mm. this, um, the, your thought that you were thinking. Okay, so like Victor going uh, to work on APIs, like is it immature and things like that. Um, and I was also very much on this um, on this kind of like an event event driven bandwagon and i was telling you like integrate through events it's awesome it's great let's do this like event driven microservices is the future true however there, we still f- keep forgetting that there's a whole world of the systems that inter- still integrate through apis that aren't and, your microservices yeah that are everything else yes right. and one of the things that um 
I, I I went a little bit forward and started researching, and uh, we we actually had this as a part of product um, uh, that allows to kind of um, the create a truce between event driven system mm-hmm. and API driven system. So on the gateway side of things, we were able to integrate um, as a as a kind of like a, as a uh, upstream service Kafka and API. So API gateway can still do call to one of the APIs, but also same data that will go to this API call, it can go and land as event in Kafka. So in this case, the API gateway can be used as a, as a system to create this integrational point uh, between event-driven systems and the API-driven systems in the past. So you kind of sort of, without changing the application code, without it changing um, how your application works, you still extracting this data because the request that comes to your application will land in Kafka topic. And after that, you can use stream, uh, stream processors to kind of like massage it, to turn it into the format that um, new event-driven system will be able to consume um, and if we will take this idea even um, even further um, as a result of this stream processing can be you know the the something that land into real-time table in a pino that mm-hmm. also will create a real-time dashboard on another side so Think about the API management platform not only as a, as a as a system of delivering results but also as a system that allows to integrate your so API driven systems and event driven systems you don't have to choose anymore you can select the one that works better for a particular situation if you want to go like uh, you know let's drink this Kool-Aid and we'll be all event driven but not today. Maybe we can do this gradually. You know, there are some systems that make sense to be written and used like event-driven approach with Kafka streams underneath that will be, you know, the, the crunching events. And there's some systems that still, you know, you need to use as API. So API Gateway allows you to extract this um, API calls and uh, turn it into events. Here's Here's just an idea, and uh, this idea worked pretty well for for um, for a few customers. Um, <laughs> surprisingly, those customers were also um, the the customers of uh, Kafka, and so that's why it was not uh, uh, no surprise for me to join this conversation with, with, with customers of the API gateway and how this API gateway can be also. It's actually you know, it's a pattern called event gateway, where you have a the API gateway REST proxy there that uh, ships data into Kafka. So here we go. My guest today has been Victor Gamov. Victor, thanks for being a part of the Real-Time Analytics Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you know where to find me on uh, Twitter slash X um, and, uh, and also community Slack for Pino and Startree. We can have uh, conversations on the comments in this podcast. And uh, hopefully I will be <laughs> joined team for many more uh, episodes in future. And there you have it. If you feel compelled to help us spread the word and grow the real-time analytics community, you can give us a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever fine podcasts are sold. If you're watching us on YouTube, hey, subscribe and of course, hit that notification bell. And you can always share your favorite episodes on LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever it is you do social media. Thanks, and I look forward to talking to you in the next episode.